Divine Truth Events. These are events and presentations by Jesus and Mary. This presentation is part of the Relationship with God series. The topic is Faith and Prayer. Presented by Jesus on the 22nd of June, 2013, in town of Mergen, Queensland, Australia. This is session three, part three. Um, before we get started, I'd just like to say that we have quite a number of visitors with us today from all different places. Um, who's, who doesn't live here, here around this area in Australia, but is from Australia? So, so quite a lot. Who, where are you from, everyone? So down New South Wales? And who's... Bathurst, New South Wales? Mackay, Queensland, Brisbane, yeah. Oh, by the way, with people who are from Brisbane, if you're going back Sunday afternoon, evening, there's two girls that would like to try to get a ride back to Brisbane. Um, if you'd like to, if you I'll, I'll point out the girls. Uh, you get, see, this is where you're going to have to confront your... Only one of them is here. If you can see her, if you're willing to take her back. <laughs> um, but by the way, they're from Canada. So, and we had some from, we've got Johans from Holland. So there's Johans from Holland. Uh, any other countries? That's about it. No worries. We'd just like to welcome everybody. If it's your first time, um, we'd like to welcome you as well. Myself and Mary would like to take this opportunity too to thank you guys for your donations while we aren't doing seminars because that's what keeps us alive. <laughs> and, uh, and so we'd like to really thank you for those, particularly those people who donate regularly to us into our bank account or through PayPal. We'd just like to thank you for doing that. Um, we often don't get to um, see all of the people who bank, who, um, and thank all the people who donate to us regularly through our bank account in particular because we don't know your personal email addresses. So, um, but with people with PayPal, we try to send off our thank yous uh, when we receive those. But we'd just like to make sure that if you haven't received a thank you from us that you realise that we're, we're truly appreciative for all the donations. Um, as you may be aware, there's some people over in Kenya at the moment, uh, still in Kenya, and also we're now connecting up with people in Kenya who are quite lovely people. Um, and so Paige and Kerry have been over there. There is a need for a few things over there, and if you would like to assist with the Kenya project... Uh, Joy, is there a box out the back called International Assistance? There is. So if there, there's a donation box out the back called International Assistance, that will go to Joy, and she will probably send most of those funds to the guys in Kenya so that they can do things over there. One of the things that they are trying to do is set up a place where they can play uh, and give to people, media players, with, uh, with all of the material on a disc. And we're also hoping to build these little boxes up uh, where people can have education on them as well, like so they're, they're little computers we're running a Unix operating system that can play all of our videos but also do a heap of other educational things. And uh, we're hoping to be able to do a few of those while the guys are there. So, but we only have the means to do that through that international assistance fund. So if you'd like to be involved with that, that's up the back. Um, is there any other things maybe that... No, I don't think so. Is there any other things that you have a question about before I proceed? No, everyone's fine. Terri oh, do you want to mention about the new... No, we won't mention about that yet because we've got to test it a bit more. There was a question about the soulmate. Can I ask that now? Or? A question about soulmates? <laughs> no, 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 not about my soulmate. Right. Um, just do you have to know who your soulmate is before you can be at one with God? No. Right, good. But you will. <laughs> you don't have to do anything, but you will. No, to be at one with God, though. When you, before you become at one with God, you will know for certain who your soulmate is. You will. But you don't have to. <laughs> do you see the distinction? No. No? Well, well it's like, 
Uh, usually, a person progresses enough in love to the point where they reach the third, the third to fifth sphere in their condition. Once a person reaches that condition of love, they will know for certain who their soulmate is. And the knowledge is the knowledge. You, you know it, and you know. Like, it doesn't mean you'll be together, but you know. Does it mean you have to actively look for that knowledge? No. It just happens? Yeah. Okay. Definitely happens. Like all of the things that God does. Remember, seek first God's love and all these other things will be added to you. You will know for certain who it is. You may not be able to act upon it for moral reasons. You may not be able to do much about it yourself in terms of their attitude. It might be one of, you know, where they're in a rage or whatever and there's not much you can do about that until they work through their negative emotions uh, but you will know yep actually another one um, when you receive divine love does your soulmate receive that as well well it's your soul that receives it yeah. and you are only one half does it so it, it impacts them in some way of course every time you receive divine love it impacts upon them yes okay every time Um, Jane, over there. <clears throat> so some of you are going, shall I receive divine love anymore? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know if I want to receive divine love if we're going to meet my soulmate. I want control. Uh, far away, Jane. Can I just ask, in relation to what Teresa just mentioned, with if you with um, oh, the soulmate, like could the same emotion be felt by them too, what you're going through, something similar? Not always. It Not depends always. on their sensitivity and your sensitivity. So obviously the closer you get to God, the more sensitive you become emotionally and therefore the more in tune you are with everyone around you, including your soulmate. And of course your soulmate being the other half of you, you're in tune with them the most. Does that make sense? Now, once, because you're in tune with them the most, you will feel their feelings the most but only if you're open to feeling those feelings. So if they're still, you know, struggling to work through fears and other type of emotions that are quite intense, then it's highly unlikely they'll be sensitive enough to feel any of your emotions that you're going through at the time. But if they've worked through some of that, then it's highly likely they will start to feel you. So I could feel, when, before I met Mary, I could feel what emotions she was going through. Yep, I'm, I'm sort of meaning something a little bit different that right. if I go through some sort of emotion about, I don't know, about something, mm -hmm. that can that trigger off in them something of similar, like a similar... Oh, not necessarily emotion. similar, no. but there might be all sorts of injuries that person has, your soulmate has about that issue. You release some of your blockages, now there's an opening to your other half, and so now the other half is almost going, almost forced, if you like, to, to go through those same emotions or they will have to exercise huge amounts of resistance in order to cope with their life. So what you often see first is they exercise huge amounts of resistance, they go into a rages and they carry on and then after a while they stop their rebellion and then they actually deal with the actual emotions. Okay, thank you. Hmm. William? Down the front. <coughs> Just have a cough. Uh, AJ, I feel that I'm pretty lucky in that my mother does quite a bit of emotional processing as well. Mm -hmm. And being sensitive, uh, I can feel that it, I feel that it makes it easier for me to then deal with the same issues. Definitely it does. It doesn't clear it, I know that. Yep. Um, but it does make it easier. So if I were to deal with uh, an emotional injury, yep. would that then make it easier for my soulmate to deal with a similar emotional issue? Yes, and even to a greater extent than it does if you're the parent. Okay. Mm. Yep. okay. So are we getting rid of some fears here? Exercising some fears about our soulmates, is that what we're doing? <laughs> uh, but it, it, honestly, um, the beauty of what God has created cannot be underestimated. And one thing that we constantly do as humans is we constantly think through our own emotional filters about these issues. And we've got to start giving that up. We've got to let go of that because the way God created 
this issue of soulmates, the issue of relationship with God, the issue of your own soul and its development and all these other things is just so beautiful that you want, you know, it makes no sense at all to fight the process. No sense at all. And yet we still fight the process. It's not a logical thing to do, fighting the process. You're just fighting the other half of yourself if you're pushing your soulmate away. You're just pushing, you're, you're actually constructing a fragmented self. Because remember that your soulmate, in the pure state, you are joined, right? You are joined with each other. So, so when you're in this state, where you've got half one and half the other, and you've got, you know, in your two bodies, right? That's not the state that God created you to be in. That's the state that God created so that you get to know yourself and then the other half of yourself. So, so God created this as a temporary state, not a permanent condition. God created this as your permanent condition, a unified state with the other half of yourself. Right? Many of, if you look at the world today, many people on the planet say that all we're trying to do as a human race is discover ourselves. And one reason why we all fail at it is because we're not discovering that we're only one half of ourselves <laughs> right from the beginning. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why it's difficult. So there's a lot of advantages to allowing yourself to go through this process of discovery. Of course, it's not going to be some kind of idealistic, you know, fantasy, because both of you have injuries. Both of you have emotional problems that you're facing, right? Both you and your soulmate. And of course, those emotional injuries are going to get confronted at some point in the future. And so, of course, it's not necessarily going, going to be all passion and fireworks at the beginning. In fact, there might be fireworks, but no passion. <laughs> and, uh, and often that is the case because we have so many injuries with the opposite gender or in the case of a, a homosexual soul with the same gender and, you know, with intergender issues. And, and so we have to work through them if we are ever going to really join with our soulmate. But God created it like that. Because it's part of the perfect, perfect plan for your future awareness. You see, that is your real self. And if I am only one half of my real self, I will never be able to, be, to have the power that the whole has. I'm never going to have the happiness that the whole has. I'm never going to have the experiences that are possible with, in terms of what we can create in the universe that the whole has. So, so while I'm fixed on staying one half of myself, I am fixed on controlling my future development. Now God wants you to have an infinite future development. God wants you to continually grow, continually grow, grow, grow infinitely towards God. That's what God wants. And while I'm trying to stay one half of myself and drawing a line down between that and the other, what am I doing? I am controlling the process that God has created for us to naturally achieve. Right? Now that process can only happen through the reception of love, like many other processes. You will not understand most of the things in the universe without the reception of God's love. That's the reality. You think you do, but you won't. You can't understand something until you experience it, right? And you won't experience it unless you receive divine love. So that's one of the things I'd like to talk to you about, is this process of prayer, which is the thing that causes you to receive divine love. And it's very important for us to understand the scientific process of prayer. It's a science in itself and can be understood by anybody, even a child, so it's easy to teach. And it's something that we need to learn how to engage. Make sense? So let's get started with it, shall we? Okay. So the first thing is about communication. What did I say before our break? How does God communicate? What's, this, what's God's language? 
Okay, so divine, God's love. So we're talking now about love that comes from God. So we're talking about God's here. Is God's method of communication, not your love. Your love actually in the end becomes your method of communication. Right? It's a significant thing to understand in the end. Your only real future method of communication is not a language. It's not English or Spanish or something like that. And it's not even an intellectual thought process that happens with a spirit body, with a person who's a spirit, which is a transmission of thought packages from one to another. But rather, in the end, it becomes the same kind of communication scheme that God has, which is the communication scheme based on the flow of love. So, firstly it's God's, and then there's the L, little love, I'm going to put it like that, and that's ours. Right. So this is the communication, the language, if you like, or expression of, of language between ourselves and God. Anybody who says that they hear God is not telling you a truth. The reality is that God does not communicate with words at all and never will. If they are hearing words, they are hearing the words of a spirit claiming to be God. It's quite simple. So whenever you hear somebody say to you, oh, I hear God all the time and God tells me these messages all the time, you know what's going on. They're automatically hearing a spirit talking to them and that spirit is either claiming to be God or suggesting to you that they're God or making out they're God or and obviously being deceitful in the process. Now some of the spirits don't feel it's a problem because they believe they're God. So there are plenty of spirits in the spirit world, particularly in the sixth dimension, that believe they're God personally. Now they're not but they believe they are and so they don't feel they're lying when they talk to you and you hear it and you say it's God. Uh -huh. Hi AJ How you doing? Um, Just wondering is it loving to point out to that person if they're saying that they're talking to God all the time is it a loving thing to say well actually I don't believe you're talking to God it's, Well it's spirit. you can talk to God all the time it's, if they it's say true. they're hearing God all the time yes, hearing well, that's God. a different matter altogether Yeah yeah. And I was just wondering, it sort of reflects back on that question you said about the Christian before, you know, about their beliefs. Yep. Like, where's the... Because um, my boyfriend's a Christian and he talks about things a lot. And does he want to know the truth? Um, well, I've met your boyfriend, haven't I? Uh, yes. Yeah, he yeah, doesn't want to know yeah. the truth. <laughs> <laughs> He's interested. And he, he, yeah, and but he doesn't want to know the truth okay. about his own relationship with God and what's really going on. He has a spirit with him that's quite heavy on him and, as you know... A righteous. Yeah, yeah. self-righteous spirit and yep. he's, uh, yeah. he's been quite influenced by him but he doesn't want to know that so it's hard to tell him something that he doesn't want to know, right? So I'd be unloving trying to, you know, explain that to him. Well, you, yeah, if, if you're in a discussion, if you're in a relationship, obviously you would discuss these matters yeah. but if he yeah. sa yeah. says, oh, no, I can't agree and whatever, then that's the end of it until he yeah. works through his own issues about it, isn't it? So agree to disagree. Yeah, you'll have to. Thank you. I don't know how the relationship will go under those circumstances, but... <laughs> yeah. If we go... Uh, just keep your hand up. Yep, that's it. So, thanks, Peter. Hi, AJ. Oh. <laughs> that's all right. Just, that's fine to hold just it up. Just there? Yeah, that's okay. good. Okay. Um, I talk to God all the time mm -hmm. and ask questions. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I get answers to my questions. Verbally? Where, well, sometimes emotionally. Yep. Um, sometimes I may hear yep. an answer back. Yep. Where do those answers come from then? From spirits who are with you. Yep. And some of them will be guiding spirits and other ones will be guardian spirits and other ones okay. will be just spirits who... Helping surround you. every person. Every person who ever lives and whoever will live mm. will be surrounded by spirits at some time in their life. Obviously, we need to determine their condition yeah. before we listen to them. And the majority of people on the planet have a large problem determining the condition of spirits they're hearing. Yeah. 
Mm. So could any of those answers actually be coming from God? No, not directly. No. 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 Yep. And with the exception of the ones that are emotional, if they're based on the emotion of love, then they will. Yeah. So, so then it, there could be emotions coming from a spirit or it could be emotions coming from God and you have to know the difference. Yeah. I suggest to you though that every time that you receive an emotion from God, because yeah. we are finite beings and God is an infinite being, yeah. you will be overwhelmed. Every yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed. So you know all of you who are trying to stop being overwhelmed? No, it's Yeah, good. give that up too. Because you, you will be overwhelmed every time when you receive something from God. And that makes sense, doesn't it? If God's an infinite being and you're a finite being, how can you not be overwhelmed yeah. every time you receive an emotion from God? Right? And that's one way of telling who's communicating with you, actually. If you're not overwhelmed by it, then it's highly unlikely that it's God, yeah. even if it's claiming to be God. Right? But let's, let's continue before we ask too many questions. We'll come down here next if, with the mics. What I want to get across is that this love is an exchange process. Communication involves two or more parties, does it not? So if we look at it from a God and our perspective, so here's God's soul, here's our soul. Now, of course, we're one half. So here we are as one half, so I'll just draw it as one half, and our other half is somewhere. And we decide, our one half decides to exercise a desire to receive God's love. Now, this desire to receive God's love communicates with God's soul. It's the desire itself, which is a transmission of a certain type of energy that transcends the boundaries of the physical universe. In other words, let's, if we look at it from this perspective, in the physical universe, let's say that's the physical universe, not that you can draw it like that, and let's say we are here on Earth in the physical universe and, there, and we're going around the sun, right? And the sun's going around a black hole and that's going around another black hole. That's called the galaxy. And all of these things are happening all at the same time. If we had to transmit using our current technology, mankind's current technology, if we had to transmit from Earth from there to the other side of this galaxy, it would take thousands of years to get there. Right. Now, it would also be a quite an attenuated signal. In other words, it would be very, very low <laughs> and pretty hard to listen to. Because, of course, signals disperse. It's different with the signals that go to God. See, God exists outside of the universe. And when we have an emotion directed at God, it's very specific and direct. And it is not attenuated. God feels it as we feel it. You understand? This is part of the science of prayer. God feels it as we feel it. If you are a spirit, you can actually see it happening to a degree. Right? And when I say see it happening, you see a color coming out of the individual and going off into a place that you cannot trace. So no spirit at this point in time has been able to trace it to its sort, to the to the the direction it goes, they can trace it to a certain point until they get beyond the universe in which they live, and then they can't see where it goes after that. Does that make sense? But it is a colour that gets transmitted. It's a it's a bluish um, burgundy type of uh, burgundy pink sort of a colour. It's very hard to describe. I'm just looking for one of you in the audience that might have the colour, but there's nobody here wearing anything like it, actually, which is interesting. Oh, my shirt. Yeah, it's sort of like... Sort of like a mixture of that colour, that pink, there, with that kind of a blue, right? Blended with each other, right? And as a spirit, you can see it. All right? Connie, if we come down. Thanks. We've got to come over here somewhere too, don't we? Yep. Can spirits also see that coming back to the person, with God's life coming back, but not knowing where that's coming from? Exactly, they can. When God transmits her love back, the spirits can actually see it. They can actually see the Holy Spirit, which is the part of the connection that happens as a result. That's why they call it that. Right? 
besides the fact that I, that I invented the term, um, <laughs> now most spirits in the spirit world call it the Holy Spirit. That's what they, as what they see. Yeah. So they see that coming back. Now these transmissions are not bound by time and space. So normally a transmission that we would send anywhere in the universe under our current constraints would be bound by the speed of light and bound therefore by and also time. So in other words, if we sent a signal now to our closest star, our closest sun other than the sun, we would send it now and eight years later it would reach there. That's our closest sun. So we send a signal now, and that's travelling at the speed of light. That signal would take eight years to get there, to our closest neighbour. Right? Now, of course, if you're wanting instant communication with God, eight-year delays are not very good. You can see that, right? And in fact, this is why God created a whole series of things that the human soul is capable of extending beyond the physical boundaries of the universe in which it resides. Now remember, from a scientific perspective, there are, at this point in time, 36 known dimensions in what you call the spirit world, including this physical one. Now, given that case, if I'm living in one of those dimensions and I can't get to the next one, but if God created my soul with the capacity to communicate beyond this one that I'm in to the next one. And in actual fact, to receive communications back as well. Right? This is how many of you who are mediums can transmit information from people who are in a better condition than yourself. Because they reside in a place that's in a different dimension. You can't get to that dimension. You're in a different dimension. But when you communicate a certain type of communication, there is this substance that leaves you and enters their dimension without you going there. You can't physically go there, but the feelings and emotions that you're transmitting can get there. Does everyone follow that? Okay. This is what is happening with God, with, the, with one exception, and that is God's existence is outside of all of the known dimensions. And as long as you have this direct feeling inside of your soul that you would like to receive and give God love... Because remember, you can give God love. Yeah, Many of you have not tried yet, <laughs> but you can. Yeah? And you will be able to transmit these feelings through and not unrestricted by time and space to God. God will instantly feel them. In fact, God is so good with this that God can feel when you're going to do it. Whereas people on earth are, and even in the spirit world are not always that good, right? So, so God can feel you're going to do it. And in fact, in, in fact, one of the truths of the spirit world is that God often sends spirits to you before you've actually had the prayer to help you have the prayer you're going to have. <laughs> Does that blow your mind or what? That's pretty clever, isn't it? So... So God is ultra-sensitive to everything that is happening in the universe. In the first century I said, God knows the very number of the hairs on your head. And if you ever see myself and Mary scratching each other's scalp, it's because we're trying to count the hairs on our head, right? It's not for any other reason. <laughs> no, no. And so... God knows these things. I said also that God knows when a little sparrow dies. God knows every exchange of energy that occurs in the universe God has created. Every single exchange. Right. And I know that because I've seen God's awareness of it in action through the last 2,000 years of my life. And also, you will become sensitive to that if the more you receive God's love yourself. You will start noticing how much God is aware of. God is aware of everything. Everything down to the minutest detail. The smallest particle known to spirits, they call an adamantine particle. It's the smallest building block of physical, uh, the physically existing in the spirit world. And God knows 
where every single one of those particles flows. It's pretty incredible, really, isn't it? But, you know, trying to understand the infinite is, is a problem in itself <laughs> when we're so finite. Anyway, so here we are. We have love, our love, and our love can be transmitted to God by having the feeling of love for God. And God's love can be transmitted to us by God having the feeling of love for us. However, God's love might not be received by us. And this is our problem. We have to be open to the reception of love in order to receive love. That makes sense, does it not? It's sort of like saying, okay, I've got a bottle here and it, if I leave the lid on, can I fill it up with water? Well, unless it's already filled with water, no, I can't. Right? I have to take the lid off, don't I? Before I've got... Oh, I need a drink too. Oh, that's better. I have to take the lid off in order to receive. Makes sense, does it not? I have to open the bottle up to the reception of water. Otherwise, it's pointless. Now, it's the same with our soul. Our soul has to open up somehow to the reception if we're going to have communication. See, it's one thing for God to love us. It's quite another thing for us to feel that God loves us. Right? For God to feel, for us to feel that God loves us, we need to feel it inside of our soul. It needs to flow in our soul. For that to happen, we have to be open to love. And for it to happen completely, we have to be open to love, masculine and feminine love. For that to happen completely. Right? So it's a very beautiful system where God, soul, is always open to every single one of her children. And whenever we have a feeling of love for God, God always feels it. And do you know why God always feels it? One of the main reasons why God always feels it? Because the feeling of love that you have for God is a very special feeling for God. Because it's not under God's control. It's something that God does not have from everyone. Do you see that? So the reception of love your love, from God's perspective, is very important to God. Because God does not have control over your soul and how it expresses love. That's what free will is. God gave you the free will to express your love in the direction that you want. As a result of that, God is not controlling how you express your love. So when you express your love to God, it's a very special time for God. Now, many of you have not considered this. Is that not true? You go, I'm not important to God. I can't see what benefit God would have with having a relationship with me. There is one extremely important benefit from God's perspective, and that is that God receives something from you that you have control over completely. Something that God doesn't normally get from you and isn't that a beautiful thing that God's given you this ability to make God's heart glad or gladder than it already is we should say yep. if we come down here to okay, then up the back to okay. I was just wondering about that is it possible to do that even while you've got conflicting emotions with God too because I've got well, obviously a lot of not properly is it? Because but just if, for a moment, maybe? Just for a moment, yes, but not properly. It's sort of like, it's like if I've got a heap of anger with God and then all of a sudden there's something that happens in my life and all of a sudden I just have this lovely feeling for God. Well, God feels it in that moment. But then if I've generally got anger with God, well, God is feeling the anger most of the time. Mm. So it's like you with your relationships with someone else. If someone is, you're in a relationship, let's say it's a partnership type relationship, and you're angry with them most of the time. So what do they most of the time feel from you? Anger. The anger. 
and then occasionally you feel like a desire for them, then what do they feel in that moment? Some desire. Now, for the majority of us, it's mostly we have dominant emotions that we feel about God, dominant emotions that you feel about other people. As a result, any person who's with you will feel the dominant emotion you have for them most of the time, with the exception of the moments where you have a different emotion. It makes sense, doesn't it? If you have an emotion dominant inside of you of anger towards men, for example, then most men around you are feeling your anger with men. And then in a moment where you have a moment of clarity and you realise that all of this anger with men is all about your dad and you have a big cry about your dad, and in that moment of time, you now are clearer with men. Now those men feel different from you in that moment. And it's exactly the same with God. God feels everything you're feeling for God in the moment you feel it. Yep. That was the question, Can I mostly? ask another question? Yep. Um, it's about, like, if you feel that you're having a longing for God and you have an emotional feeling with it, like, is it possible to just have, be having a relationship with a spirit that way who's just stepping into the process? Well, it depends whether your longing for God is sincere. Mm. And it's all driven by sincerity. So if your longing for God is sincere and it's pure, no other person can receive your longing from God, for God. But if your longing for God is insincere and driven by an addiction, and, and, and then any person in the universe can receive it. Does that make sense? So it gets down to the, whether the longing is pure, sincere and based on truth inside of yourself. So you can't fake it with God. So, so what happens is, let's say this is you, and let's say you think you have a longing for God, but the reality is you just want God to come and make a lot of your life better and you want some addictions met and you really want God to just tell you that you're great and there's no problem with you and all of those things which are all addictive. What will happen is you'll send that out and it won't reach God because God doesn't respond to insincere longings. But it will reach myriads of other souls in the universe, including souls in any condition. Now, if one of those souls want to respond, they will. So why would they respond? Well, they might have an addiction. So they have an addiction to meet your addiction. And so they respond with a feeling and you go, oh, this is God. No, it's not God because you're in an impure, addictive state. So therefore, it's not God. Uh, in the moment, you have to be in a pure longing for it to be connection with God. So people worry all the time and go, am I connecting with God? Am I connecting with Spirit? All you have to do is ask yourself one question. Am I being sincere? Because if you're not sincere, you're not connecting with God. God only connects to your sincerity. Now, God is always trying to influence other spirits who are sincere in their connection with God to help you have a sincere connection with God. Right? And with varying degrees of success, depending on their level of sincerity. That's, that's a normal process. So the main question we have to ask ourselves is, is this transmission and desire for reception pure? Is it really there? Is it, do I have a longing? Now, there are moments in your life where you do. Usually, it's only little moments, unfortunately. What we want to do is get it to be 24 by 7. That's the goal in the end. But when you start, it's just going to be maybe five seconds, two seconds. And then, you, get, you know, you have that two-second longing, and all of a sudden you start feeling overwhelmed, and what do you do? Shut it all down, right? There it stops, bang. Because you're now using your will to stop the flow. You've now closed your soul to the inflow of the love. Remember I said it will always overwhelm you because God's an infinite being. It's always going to overwhelm you. Of course, it doesn't overwhelm God, but God does get emotional about it. And when I say, say God gets emotional about it, God has extreme feelings of beautiful feelings of love when you have a feeling of love for God. And the reason why is because it is an emotion that God knows he gave you the gift to use however you wish. And so you have the power to make God's heart glad. 
And isn't that a beautiful concept in itself? So here we go. We have this communication scheme, if you like, which is a, is a scheme that has been scientifically proven by large groups of celestial spirits. Who, any person who's become a celestial spirit knows this is the science of communication between God and ourselves. And the communication scheme is the love of God is gets transmitted to us. So remember, here we are. This is our half of the soul, and here's God's soul. If I could draw such an infinite thing, and here's the love, our our soul, God's love, uh, that we our half of the soul most of the time when we're starting this process. Now, for this to work properly, it makes sense that four things have to happen. Firstly. This soul has to be open to the reception of the love. And this soul would need to also want to give the love. So it has to be open to the reception and be open to giving. So it has to be able to receive and give love. God's, love, God's soul would also have to do the same. But this state is automatic with God. God wants to do that already with you. God is already attempting to do that with you right now. Even right as we speak, God is wanting you to receive God's love. God wants to hear from you and feel for you constantly. So really what happens is the only thing that present, prevents us from receiving the love is our own soul. Can you see that? That is the only thing that stops us from receiving the love. Karen, at the back. If you keep your hand up, Karen, so that Peter can see. Thanks. In the last few months, I've, um, I, I think probably the my only repeatable experiment that gives me the consistent results is that um, I can love God, feel love for God and um, I feel, feel a very consistent warmth and an emotion in return but I have a belief that I am closed to receiving love and I feel quite fatalistic about that and I just sort of often think, well, maybe at some time something magical will happen and I'll be able to receive love. I, I don't know Can I stop this. you for a moment? Nothing magical will happen in order for you to receive the love. I don't know how to open the bottle. Yeah, but you're not being honest with yourself in, if you believe that something magical might happen in the future to receive the love. Karen, you're not even hearing what I'm saying now. At all. So if you're not hearing what I'm saying to you, how are you going to receive any truth from God? And this is the issue, is an issue more of truth, is it not? Like when I say a truth to you, you're just closed. Your heart's closed to hearing it, right? Let's, let's just look at it. The reality is you're saying that you don't feel, and I don't agree, but this is what you're saying, you're saying that you have a feeling of love for God. So this is you. You have a feeling of love for God. And in that moment, you do feel overwhelmed emotionally. Is that that's really what you're saying? I'm, I don't think I feel overwhelmed. I just feel that it, it feels like God's love is surrounding me but not getting into me. Oh, I agree completely with that statement. Agree completely. And that is because you are closed to the reception of love. Yeah, and I don't know what to do about that. Now you're not being honest. It's under your control. Your control, not God's. It's almost like you're angrily blaming God for something that you are doing. Many of you do this, I notice, where you almost think like, it's not happening, so it must, it's not my fault, I've tried. And I'm, and I'm going, oh, hang on a sec, that's not how it works. How it works is, you've got this block here, you put it here, you've got to remove it. And I am aware that I'm, 
when, in relation to my parents, I want to protect myself from what exactly is that's from one of the emotions. Yep, I agree. But, Desire for self-preservation. But I, I wasn't quite sure earlier on uh, in that discussion. Um, like, I, I understood from that I don't have to clear everything with my parents before I can start receiving love from God. No, you don't. But the reality is you are preserving yourself. You are blocking God's love. And you're going to have to remove that block if you're ever going to receive love from God. And that block is under your control. There's no magical process other than you working through the issues to find out why you're blocking. There's not going to be any magical solution here and you want there to be one, which means that you're actually angry. And you don't want to, you don't want to address that. right? The reality is, every one of our blockages to love usually create, has some anger associated with it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be blocked to it. right? Mm -hmm. And most of our angers are about the feeling when we were a child that we were controlled by other people's love for us, in quotation marks that we were manipulated by them, that we were you know, pushed into doing things that we didn't really want to do, and those kind of belief systems. And God will never do that with you. But you don't believe that yet. And that's why you stay blocked to the flow of God's love. You don't believe it yet. You're going to need to work on these beliefs rather than having faith in them. Remember in our earlier discussion, faith in the error blocks you until such a time as you decide to no longer have faith in the error. At the moment you have faith in the error. You believe that you should maintain self-preservation. And what I'm saying to you is you're going to have to take an active step inside of your own life to give that up. Otherwise no love will flow. Does that make sense? And we can't say that there's going to be some magical solution to that. It's under the control of your own soul and it's only your own soul that can remove it. And the only way you can remove it is by feeling what the cause was. That's the only way to remove it. Now you can pray for knowledge of the cause. You can ask some spirit help, help to give you knowledge of the cause. You can do all sorts of things in your private life to work out. the. You, know, you can do things like I've done. You know, Make tables of what are my feelings are, what God's feelings are, what my fears are and all those kind of things. But at the end of the day, until you feel it, the block will remain. And you're unwilling to feel it. Is it helpful to start with the um, feeling that, with, with going through the feeling that I can't do it, I just can't yes. do it? Yes. Very, very helpful. In fact, essential. Okay. Essential. Thank you. That is one of the feelings that prevents the flow. Right. Does that make sense? The yeah. feeling that I can't, that there has to be some magical solution. Yeah. That is one of the feelings you're going to have to feel. Definitely. Yep. Thank you. Very good. Yep. So do we understand how there is, this, there is this process that many of us have, and that is that we block this flow between ourselves and God. We either block the outgoing, or we block the incoming, or we block both. Right? Now one of the things I'd like to point out to you is that the way God's love is, is that it's very sensitive to the way you love others. In other words, God will feel that you are being insincere with God if you at one time want love from God while at the same time you hate your brother. Do I need to say that again? Yes. If God can sense from your soul that you want love from God but at the same time in that moment you are desiring to hate your brother... God's love cannot flow. Right? Because God's love is sensitive to how you feel about all of the others of God's children. Now that makes sense, does it not? Would not your love be sensitive if you had three children and one child was treating two other children badly? Wouldn't your love be sensitive to what's going on there? And wouldn't you wish to surround the people who are being treated badly with more of your love? And wouldn't you want to try to correct the one who's being unloving? Well, this is how God feels with you. Exactly the same way. Right? God's love cannot flow while you are actually in a state of judgment or harm of others. Right? No matter what, how much longing you have about that. Now, 
Remember I said that these are instantaneous moments in our lives. So, so there might be an instantaneous moment in your life where there, all of a sudden there's no judgment and you have a longing for God's love, you'll receive love then. But if you have judgment at another time inside of your heart that you're not letting yourself feel and, you, and or that you are feeling and projecting at somebody and then you expect to get some love from God when you ask for God's love, you're not going to receive any. Because God's love is as sensitive to all of God's children, not just to you. All right? So there's times in our life where we have these emotions. Now, many of you don't understand. There's a state in your soul where the emotions are stagnant. So if this is our soul, we often have a whole group of emotions that are completely stagnant. They're like a hard rock inside of our soul. That make sense? Now, those kind of emotions, they won't flow in you. And they'll only f if they do flow, they'll only flow under certain triggering circumstances. Does that make sense? Then there are other emotions that you have right at this moment that you let flow through you. Every one of those emotions that you let flow, everyone around you can feel. The emotions that are hard as a rock inside of you, it takes a very sensitive person to feel. Right. For good reason, because it's not flowing and therefore not creating much energy as a result of its lack of flow. Right. Now when we understand this, we start to understand how God feels us. All of those emotions that are hard as a rock inside of us, God can sense and feel, but they don't flow. They don't flow, they're not going to flow into God's soul, no matter what they are. So if you're really hard-hearted about love, that's a problem, eh? Can you see that? And many of us are hard-hearted about love. We have a very mercenary belief system sometimes about love, right? Yeah. Many of us are disillusioned with love, cynical about love. These are all emotions you, that are very important to deal with if you're going to ever communicate and receive communications from God. Because if you have all of those kind of emotions, they shut down the process of the soul loving. And remember, this communication, prayer, communication between yourself and God, is the result of feelings and emotions that are expressed. Here we go, Rachel. Up the back, thank you. And over there. Over there. Um, when you were saying before, if you have feelings of hate or anger towards someone else, mm -hmm. you can't receive God's love. You can ask. Can you ask for God to help you feel why you feel that, and then certainly because I've had that where I, I've gone to God and asked why do I feel this way, and then I've realised why, and then God's love has come. Yep. After that. Yes, see, God's always responding to a humble heart. A person who wants to know the answer, God will always try to tell the answer too. Yeah. So that's not, so you see, this is what I'm saying. These are, these are conditions in time. Don't think that everything I'm talking about is something that's right across the board, because it's not. In any one single moment, you have different feelings. And as a result of those different feelings, there will be different responses from everyone around you, including God. Right? At any one moment in time, you may have a whole series of different types of feelings. And, and usually we feel one feeling in a sequential, type of sequential, but one feeling often opens up to another feeling, and so forth and so forth. So in the course of even a few minutes, you can have a longing for God and then feel angry, and then have, have a cry and then have a longing for God again. And in those moments, different things will happen as a result. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, it's not a static thing. It's an ever-changing thing. Yeah? That's the key thing to remember. Okay, well, um, it must be getting pretty late now. It's dark outside, so it must be quarter to six. So um, what I'd probably like to do is just... We, we need to use this now for tomorrow's discussion as a basis for tomorrow's discussion. Because it's very important that you understand this principle, even from an intellectual perspective, that... The communication mechanism between yourself and God is only love. And if you are blocked to love in any way, 
its transmission or its reception, then there will be an interference with your communication with God. Everyone understands that? One day in your future, you're going to have an emotional awareness about that. And it's going to just blow you away. Because it's such an important truth that you have no idea at this point in time how important it is. When you really understand it, it's just going to... like You'll probably cry for a few days about that one truth. It's just an amazing truth that affect, will affect the rest of your existence. All right? Because it, it resolves so many problems and so many questions all in just one truth. Questions that at the moment many of you have asked in the past and I've given you answers, but, but really this one answer from a soul perspective would have resolved all of those questions at once. All right? It is such an important truth to understand that it's communication with God occurs through this mechanism of love. And from a scientific point of view, it's an instantaneous communication and God's soul is aware of things before their events, before the events occur. God even knows when you're going to do it. You follow? You don't know when God's going to do it. God's doing it all the time, mind you. So perhaps you do know when God's going to do it. But the reality is, God knows when you're going to do it. God knows when you're going to have a sincere longing for love. Before you even have one. That's how aware of you God is. So don't you go around thinking or putting faith in the idea that you're worthless from God's perspective. Which is what most of you have been doing, yes? You, most of you have been putting faith in this false concept that God doesn't care, God doesn't know, God doesn't, isn't aware of your life, what's going on, how you feel. All untrue. The whole lot's untrue. Stop believing things that are untrue. Stop putting faith in things that are untrue. Have some faith in what is true. What is true is God is instantly and pre-aware of everything. That's going on in your life. God even knows exactly why you've made every single choice you will ever make. And that's why God can be pre-aware. Right? About every choice you're going to make. Given the situations and the circumstances. So this understanding is very, very important to your understanding of prayer. Can you see? See, how many of you have thought of prayer like, like the religions teach you prayer? Most of us do. Whenever we hear the word prayer, we think that's what it means. You know, like, how Mary, Mother of God. Or if we don't think that, we think, oh, maybe I'll just have a talk with God. And while talking with God does help, it helps only in opening up our soul. Now, one thing I haven't discussed, there's quite a lot of things I haven't discussed with you yet about prayer and its operation upon your own soul. Because actually... Prayer has a larger operation on your own soul than it does on God's. Prayer has a larger effect and operation on your own soul. I'm thinking before you receive divine love, prayer itself, which remember is the sincere heartfelt longing to receive God's love, has a larger operation on your own soul than it does on God's. Right? Uh, do any one of you know, want to know why? <laughs> yeah? Or do you already know why and I don't have to talk about it? No? Yes? When you have a longing, remember prayer is a longing... If you imagine this is your soul for a moment, and you imagine this is how you are, like a closed ball, all uptight. Yeah? Right? Imagine yourself like that. That's how most of us live our existence here on earth. We're all closed down and uptight. Whenever you have a longing for anything, it opens your soul 
up to that thing. It, it creates an opening to that thing. This is why your desire is powerful. Every time you desire something, you're open, your soul actually physically, if you could watch it with a camera, it physically opens up to that thing. Every time you have a pure desire for it. Does that make sense? I know it's hard for me. It's hard for me to put into words what I'm trying to get across to you. So um, please understand that. But it, what happens is it's like if you're like all like this, right? And if you can think about like your hand, if you're like a fist, and somebody gives you something, can you receive it? Of course you can't, right? Unless it's smaller than your fist. And even then it's just going to maybe fall off or whatever. But if you're like that, and somebody gives you something, you can grab hold of it, can't you? You can hold onto it and you can pick it up. Now, if you can think of your soul in a similar way, that it creates a long... When you create a longing inside of your soul, you open... Physically, your soul opens up to experience that thing. So prayer has a greater effect on your own soul than it does on God, in the sense that it stops you from being closed. And remember, the only thing that prevents you from receiving divine love is you being closed. Because God already wants to give you the love. God's all wanted to give you love ever since you've been created, ever since you ex existed. And the only thing preventing the flow of this love into your soul is your own closed down state. So as soon as you have a longing in the direction of God's love, your soul opens up a hole in your soul. And now, that thing that you long for, and in this case, God's love, the thing you long for, can flow into it. So prayer has a greater effect on your own soul than it does on God's. Right. Now, once that opening is made... Obviously, things can flow in. The bigger the opening, the more things. The smaller the opening, the less things. All right. And remember, this longing is also like a signal to God that transcends the boundaries of the universe in which you reside and enters the soul of God as a feeling which God feels and is, uh, can respond to in some way. That makes sense to you? And it's exactly the same, by the way, in the way in which you relate to others. Every time you have a longing for something to somebody else, they will feel it as a feeling. Right? That their soul has the ability to respond to, if they choose. Now, the difference between anybody else and God is that God always chooses. God's always loving and God always wants the feeling. Because it's the only feeling that God knows he can't get from you unless you want to give it. Right? Unlike other people, they'll try to take it from you at any time. Is that not true? Yeah. Can I Um, does the longing um, release the blocks or brings up the blocks or where do the, the blocks go? <laughs> no, no. The longing does not release the blocks, right? The blocks might be still within your soul, but the longing will create an opening for love to enter you and the love will do its work, right? It will do its work if you allow it. The blocks can only be released by, by you opening a part of your soul and have a longing to release them. <laughs> Does that not make sense? If you do not have a longing to release it, then the block cannot be removed no matter how much longing you have for God's love and no matter how much of God's love you receive. You can actually receive God's love without making any changes in your life 
That is physically possible to a degree. And in fact, many people do it. The reality is there are many people on this planet who have received divine love and yet their belief systems and their desire to not release false beliefs cause their soul to close back up and stop the blocks from releasing. And eventually, nothing more can go in because something has to come out in order for more to go in. Right? And this is the problem we have as well. Every time we shut down, what are we doing? We're just closing down the whole process every single time to our own detriment. Every single time. Okay. Does the um, application of will in that process have an effect on that opening of our soul? Of course, well a longing, longing cannot be generated without so your the, will being involved. So the will, the will and then the, and the longing is in that process? Of course, yep. yes. But remember the longing is, is a generated feeling. So you have to use your will to generate the feeling. Yep. You can't use your head to generate no. the feeling. It has to be coming from an emotional state within you, yeah. not a head-based state. So the reality is you can do this all the time. You can receive and give communication to God all the time through your soul, even when you're talking to other people and doing because it doesn't need your words. It doesn't need your thoughts. It needs your feelings. And the reality is your soul is capable of feeling things while you're thinking other things. Right? So, it's a pretty good soul. God designed it, that's why it's pretty good. Right? This is the beauty of what we need to understand, that every time we generate a longing, there is an opening to reception for whatever it is. So if, you, so if I said to you, none of you are going to find your soulmate until you have a longing for them, can you see what you've got to have to do? You're going to have to do with your soulmate exactly the same thing as you're going to have to do with God. You're going to have to open and have a longing for their love to enter you before you're ever going to probably meet up with your soulmate. Other than that, you will meet your soulmate accidentally perhaps, but you won't even recognise them. It's the longing that is going to generate the relationship. Now, if you've got sadness or anger about the opposite gender, or if, assuming you're a heterosexual soul, you've got sadness about your opposite gender, then of course there's not going to be much longing. So they're not going to feel your longing. And as a result, they can't be drawn to you. It's our own, it's all under our own control. But not from our head, not from our addictions, from the pure emotions that exist in our soul. So, this beautiful thing that happens, which is the opening of our soul, can only happen with prayer towards God. If we want to open towards God, the opening of our soul towards God can only happen with prayer. And the only way that you're going to have an opening towards your soulmate is basically having a prayer for your soulmate. It's love, which is... The same kind of thing towards your soulmate, towards the other half of yourself. So if there's two connections that you want to develop a longing for and understand communication about, they are God and the other half of yourself. To the other half of yourself. If you do not have a longing for the other half of yourself, you will never be able to receive the love that will come from the other half of yourself. And if you do not have a desire to give that other half of yourself love, you, they will never feel from you your love. And I suggest to you that if those two things or one of those two things happens, you will not meet or if you do meet, you will not be with your soulmate as a result. And the same applies with our relationship with God. If we don't have a longing, our soul is not open to receive the love. The love is right there waiting to enter, but it cannot enter. It will not enter and cannot enter. God honours your feelings. God honours your will. 
how you exercise your will. Many of us are still exercising our will to block out the love. As a result, we're not going to feel any. And then we'll say, oh, but I've tried, or oh, but I think these teachings are not very, re you know, not very real, or whatever. But the reality is, we just have to have a longing, and once we do, we will start the feelings. And if you're humble, you'll allow them to go on and on and on. If you're humble, you will allow them to go on. But the will has to be expressed in the longing. Okay, well, what I would like to do is leave it there tonight. And uh, tomorrow, what I'd like to do is talk more to you about the science of prayer and how it works so that we understand it a bit better and also can start to maybe feel it a bit better. So it's one thing to get it here, but quite another in our mind, but quite another to actually feel the truth of it in our heart. So, so what I would like to do tomorrow is discuss more about this avenue of prayer and then talk about how faith influences our desire for prayer. What, in other words, integrate the two qualities that we've been talking about for the last two or three times we've got together. So thanks for your time tonight, guys, and we'll see you tomorrow if you want to come. Thanks.